So after his resurrection, while his disciples were busy mourning, crying, and missing him, he did appear to them, lived with them for a while, ate with them to prove to them that he wasn't only just living, but he was actually living and not a ghost. while I was with you. Everything written about me in the laws of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. So Jesus stayed back on earth for about 40 days, hanging out sometimes with the disciples and still performing miracles even after his resurrection. It's unbelievable. His disciples were overwhelmed. So he stayed with them, hung out with them. And then finally, he went back to heaven right in front of them. But not without leaving them with a specific instruction of what to do. Be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Jesus is seated right now when he left earth. He is now seated with God in heaven with his hands always open. You can see his hands are open. Where his hands open, his hand is now open to reconnect us back to God. Anybody that comes to him and says, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Thank you for taking away my sin. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. Automatically what happens, Jesus becomes your Lord and Savior. He cleanses you of your sin. He comes to live inside of you and he reconnects you back to the Father. Remember his major job on earth, why he came was to take away our sin, to break all of the things that sin brought, and then to connect us back to the Father. So it is not enough that he died. He needs to reconnect you back to the Father. But it's not automatic. You have to come to him. You have to tell him that you're sorry you're a sinner and that you're ready to stay away from sin. Are you ready to do that now? Do you want to reconnect to God? I have reconnected. My life before was actually miserable. Until I found him. I prayed the simple prayer and I meant that I wanted a better life. I wanted a new life. He gave me a new life. So now if you want to reconnect with him, I want you to close your eyes. Let's just, it's, it's, it's a simple prayer, but you have to believe that it's real because it's risen. You saw the tomb, it's open. Let's pray. 
Just say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I believe you are the Son of God. Forgive me all of my sins. I give my life to you. I want a brand new life. I say no to sin. Come into my life, become my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. I accept you from today. Lead and guide me. Come and live inside of me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Reconnect me back to the Father. I receive you as my new Lord and Savior. Come into my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. This is the most phenomenal part. It is not enough to give your life to Jesus Christ. When you give your life to him, guess what happens? The best gift on earth. His Holy Spirit now enters. Remember whatever he says he will do, he does. He promises that where he goes back to the Father, that he's not going to leave us alone on earth. That his spirit is always going to be with us. So what happened? When you give your life to Jesus Christ, a free gift is given to everybody. And that gift is called the Holy Spirit. His spirit now comes to live inside of you, to lead you, to guide you, to teach you things, and to keep you connected to the Father. So that whenever God looks at you, he doesn't see the human sin. He doesn't see you as who you are. He sees the spirit of Jesus inside of you. That spirit is called the Holy Spirit. Now, how do you receive the Holy Spirit? It's very easy. All you have to do is ask. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, it says, whoever asks us what? Receives. My life used to be miserable. When I was in school, I used to go to wild parties. I used to smoke. I used to drink. I, do, I can't even tell you all of the things I used to do. Because the spirit of the Lord wasn't living inside of me then. I have this terrible wound. It was the first day I went to drink when I was in, when I was in my A-levels. It hasn't left me. There are some things you do when you're young. And then when you're old, you want to take them back. You can't even take them back. But with the Holy Spirit living inside of you, he leads you. He restrains you from sin. And above all, it keeps you connected to God. So how do you receive? It's not enough to just say, Jesus, I give my life to you. It's a free gift. But the Bible says, whoever asks, receives. So ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Do you want to close your eyes again? It's not magical. It is real. All you have to do, look at me. I used to smoke. I used to drink. I used to throw wild parties. Everybody in college knew me. But look at me today, working for God, doing something phenomenal. Doing something outstanding. Talking about God and telling people to come to God. That's because the new spirit lives inside of me. Same thing applies to you. Your life, you can be a brand new you. So do you want the Holy Spirit? Close your eyes and let's ask him. Just say, Lord Jesus. You said whoever asks receives. I want a new spirit. I want your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, enter me. Jesus, I ask that your spirit will enter me from today. Let your spirit live inside of me. Guide me. Lead me. Teach me the things that I do not know and restrain me from sin. Holy Spirit will receive you. Holy Spirit will receive you. Holy Spirit will receive you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you might feel as if nothing happens to you. But do you know what? The Bible says whoever acts receives. And you know God cannot lie. Remember the tomb? He said he was going to resurrect and he resurrected. So if he says that whoever acts receives, be rest assured that if you did ask, you're going to receive. And if you feel, oh, I'm not sure I entered, you can go into your bedroom. I know somebody that prayed a prayer like this and went into his bedroom and said, Holy Spirit, if you're really real, please come to me, come to me. And right there in his bedroom, he felt something. He felt a presence. He just knew when it entered him. He comes to people in different ways. All you have to do is ask him. And if you want to get details about the Holy Spirit, go to the book of John so you can learn more about him. And then now, I want you to look at that next easel over there. It says, no more separation. Isn't that phenomenal? That is what God wanted all along. We're no longer separated from him. Now look at his face. Isn't he excited? Now once you've given your life to Jesus Christ, and Jesus has taken away your sin, and the Spirit of Jesus Christ has entered you, guess what happens next? You're now reconnected back to the Father. So when God looks at you, he doesn't see your sinful nature anymore. Who he sees is his son, Jesus Christ. So even when you die and go to heaven, we're going to reconnect to him. That's all God wanted. Remember, that was what he wanted from the beginning. That relationship that he had with him. That relationship that we shared with him. He doesn't want us living in pain, living separated from him. So you're no longer separated from God. Now, if you want to stay connected, if you want to stay connected, if you want to grow, if you want to know more about him, 
this is one of the last things because it's not enough for you to give your life to him for you to have the holy spirit how do you stay connected because you still live on earth there's going to be distractions and all of that what do you do now now this is the big and the last one pray for you to stay connected to your father it's just like having a phone and you have your mom living outside the country and you rarely talk to her you have a phone but it's useless you have the Holy Spirit, but it's useless. So when you, anytime you pray, it's as if you're making a phone call to God. Do you understand? Now, the night before Jesus died, he was very burdened. He cried. He was tired. And he prayed. Now, I want you to watch this. While he was praying, power came in from heaven. And God strengthened him from heaven. That was why he was able to go through all of the things he was able to go through. The same thing happens to us. Every time you kneel down to pray in your bedroom, it looks as if nothing happens. Sometimes... Does it happen to you? Keep wondering, is this prayer even working? It sure works. Jesus didn't even know that power was entering him from heaven. The same way when you kneel in your bedroom to pray, you just feel, oh, this prayer doesn't even work. It sure works. For every time you kneel down to pray, you're making a phone call to heaven and strength, energy, and life is entering you. So if you want to stay connected, if you want to be the best that God has made you to be on earth, if you don't want ever to be separated again from him, and if you don't want sin taken all over you again, always remember to dial God in the place of prayer. It could be in the mornings, it could be at night, it could be in the car, wherever you are. You can even pray in your heart when, when you are in fear. But remember, because his spirit is inside of you, you can always talk to him anytime. Stay. So that was how the story ended, the story of love. He finished his job on earth and he went back to God in heaven. But he promised us that one day, just like we saw him go up into heaven, he's going to come back like that. And if he said he was going to die, he resurrected and resurrect, and he did that, that means he's not, he's not lying to us. One day, he's just going to come back the way he went up. But he left us with one last wish. Now, he left us with one command when he went back to heaven. And that command is that we should go to the whole of the world and preach the gospel to everybody. You don't have to be a pastor to preach. He said we should go to preach to everybody. And that is what I just did through my platform, through my creativity. So whether you're good in singing, drawing, talking to people, you can just share the same gospel. So what I did, I just did mine. You can also share the gospel by actually posting, reposting this video so that other people can actually reconnect and understand the message of Easter. Happy Easter, happy resurrection.